<clears throat> oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the just decrees of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies I delight as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Please be seated.
The Old Testament reading is from Exodus, the 20th chapter. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You, not, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that is your neighbor's. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Hebrews, the fifth chapter. For every high priest chosen among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins, just as he does for those of the people. And no one takes this honor for himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, in the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel reading. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 19th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And behold, a man came up to him, saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which ones? And Jesus said, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All these I have kept. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you will be perfect, go, sell what you possess and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, only with difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. Again I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord my God. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon text for this evening is the Old Testament reading from Exodus chapter 20. This evening we are closing out our Lenten midweek sermon series on the Ten Commandments with Commandments 8, 9, and 10. And over the past six weeks we've talked about the commandments and the various expectations that they bring from God into our lives the final three commandments focus specifically on our relationships with the people in our lives, how we speak about them and how we treat them. Well, my dear friends in Christ, these last three commandments are some that we break very often. We break them in ways that we don't even think about. They're broken through some of our habits that have just formed in our lives. And like all the commandments, we cannot even come close to keeping these. Tonight I want to talk about these three commandments just a little bit out of order. I'm going to talk about the ninth and 10th commandments first because they go pretty well together. The ninth and 10th commandments tell us that we are not to covet anything that belongs to our neighbors. 
We're not supposed to covet their house or any of their property. We aren't supposed to covet, supposed to covet their spouse either. And these are things that we find ourselves doing on a regular basis. I mean, when we understand what the definition of a neighbor really is, and we learn that it doesn't just mean the people who live within eyesight of our house, we realize that we break these two commandments all the time. Just last week, I was driving down the road on my way here to a meeting, and I pulled up to a stoplight on 53 right next to a Lamborghini. There I was driving my Dodge Grand Caravan, all the car seats in the back. And I found myself just staring over at that Lamborghini. And I, I really would have loved to have been in that car instead of my van. And I started coveting what that person had. And it's as simple as that. It doesn't take anything more than a thought. And I had broken the 10th commandment through my desire to have a car that someone else owned. And we can apply a situation like that to just about anything. You, you go to a friend's house and it's bigger or nicer than yours and you start to feel jealous. Or you start talking about your job with someone and you find out that you're in a similar field to them but they have a much better pay and benefits package than you do and suddenly you want their job instead of yours. It's something that we just can't get away from. It's a part of our sinful nature. And sometimes when we break these two commandments, the Ninth and Ten Commandments, it can actually lead us into breaking the Eighth Commandment as well. You see, when we look at something that someone else has, that's something that we want, sometimes we have some not-so-nice thoughts slip into our head about that person. Sometimes those thoughts turn into words and we begin talking poorly about that person without really knowing the situation. The Eighth Commandment tells us that we're not supposed to tell lies about our neighbor, but really it goes even further than that because we're supposed to put the best construction on what our neighbors say and do as well. I mean, think about it with me for a second. You know someone who is going out and they're, they're going to buy a really nice house or a really nice car, and you've, know them, you've known them for a long time, and you know that they don't always seem, or don't often seem at all, to have an awful lot of extra money just lying around. So what is often one of the first thoughts that pops into your head? Usually it's something about how could they possibly afford that, or, or where did they get the money for that? Something along those lines. We often automatically think the worst about people instead of assuming the best. I mean, maybe that person never had any extra money lying around because they were being very frugal and saving every penny they could so they could finally go out and afford the house or car that they really wanted and they'd finally reached their goal, so now they've gone out and bought it. Or how about another example? This, and this is one that those of us here in the church really find ourselves fighting an awful lot. We all know one or two people here, either here or somewhere else, that don't have the greatest attendance record at church or Sunday school. They just don't show up any more than once a month or sometimes even less. Now often we might find ourselves thinking less of that person because they aren't here as often as we are. We might find ourselves thinking that they don't have as good of a faith as we do because they don't show up regularly. We might even find ourselves thinking that they just aren't as good of a person as we are. But here's the thing with that. If you don't know what's going on with that person and you're just assuming things about them, then you're surely breaking the Eighth Commandment. Your job under this commandment is to put the best construction on all things that your neighbor says and does. And God here is calling us to speak in a positive and nice way about our neighbors. And he's also telling us that we shouldn't automatically assume the worst about someone just because there's something that we aren't so sure about. This is hard. This is not, this is not really an easy thing to do. It's, it's so easy to get caught up in all the gossip about others. And it's so easy to think that we know everything that we need to know in order to make a judgment about someone else. It even happens in Scripture. In Mark chapter 14, a woman anointed Jesus' head with oil. She used a very expensive flask of oil to do it. And the people who saw her do it were upset that she didn't sell the oil and give the money to the poor instead. They were assuming the worst about her. 
They didn't realize that she was worshiping Jesus when she anointed his head. And Jesus even said, she has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. Jesus told the onlookers that this woman that they were grumbling about had actually come and worshipped him in a very loving and caring way. And my friends, those people who just a few verses later in Mark came to arrest Jesus and put him on trial, they were also breaking the Eighth Commandment. Not only were they making up lies about Jesus and what he had said and done, they were also assuming that there was no way that what he had said about himself could be true. They weren't willing to put the best construction on what Jesus had said and done, and in the end, it cost Jesus his life. Jesus was sent to the cross to die on the testimony of some people who knew they were lying when they spoke about him. He was sent to the cross to die because of the religious leaders who couldn't believe that he really was the promised Messiah who had come to save the world from sin. And Jesus was sent to the cross because of our part in those sins as well. Because of the way that we covet things that belong to our neighbors and because of the way that we look at other people and talk about them behind their backs, all those sins sent Jesus to the cross to die. But my friends, as we will celebrate in just over a week, Jesus also rose again. Jesus took all those sins with him. He took all of the coveting and the lying and the negative thoughts that we have about others. He took all the sins that we've ever committed and he went to the cross with them. And then three days later, he rose again from the dead. He rose again in victory and we share in that victory. We receive the forgiveness from God that we could never earn on our own because of Jesus' victory over sin and death. My friends, while we have walked through these Ten Commandments and seen all the different ways that we fall short of keeping them, while we've seen how much we fail on a daily basis, we can take comfort in the fact that Jesus kept them perfectly in our place. Jesus never failed, even once. And through His death and resurrection for us, we are forgiven. We have been made right with God. And we're assured of our salvation through our faith in Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all of our human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen.
be seated as we receive your gifts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening and pray for your forgiveness. God, we daily sin much. We daily fail to live up to the standards that you have set for us. We daily break these ten commandments that you have given to us. God, forgive us for our shortcomings. Help us to turn our hearts from our sin and to focus our eyes on you and the gift of your Son, Jesus, for us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for all those who are suffering from illness and injury. Be with them during this time of struggle in their lives. We ask you to work mightily through the doctors and nurses and other medical staff that are caring for them. Work through the medications that they are being given. Work through their family and friends who are there supporting them. God, if it is your will, bring healing to those who are suffering from illness and injury. And if it is not a time for healing, we pray that you would limit the suffering that they face and call them home to you soon. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we pray for those who are feeling the sting of death in their lives right now. Bless and comfort those who have lost a, f a friend or family member. Keep them strong in their faith and help them to rely on your promise of the resurrection. Remind them that all those who die in the faith no longer suffer or feel any pain and that we will one day see them again in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for this church and all the people who are members here. We pray for the guests that we have welcomed through our doors. We pray for all people who have been a part of this church in one way or another. Be with all these people, Father. Help them to continue to live for you. Help them to continue to share the faith that you have given to them with others. Bless our time together in worship and fellowship in this building. And let everything that we do here be for your glory. Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray for our community. We pray for all those people who do not know you. Send us out from this place to go and meet them as we work, shop, and live in this community. Help us to be a blessing to them and give us the words to speak, to share the amazing love and the awesome promises that you have made to those who believe in you. God, we pray that through the work of your Holy Spirit, we can help others come to faith in you right here in LaGrange in the Louisville area. Lord, in your mercy. For all these things and anything else we should pray, we do so in the name of our loving Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You are free in Christ. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.